recording permissions that using easy security uh, is a process that is um, dealing with the very complex task of setting up new permission sets, but also modifying existing ones. The SQL profiler is being used for the recording and it can also add related permissions. One thing that is really important is to restart the service tier because it actually has a lot of cache um, being used by the service tier. So if you don't restart, you don't necessarily get all the permission rights. Uh, it's also important to only have a single user working through the service tier. So in general, you should set up a service tier only intended for one user. In earlier versions of NAV 2009 and earlier, you can actually filter on the user. In 2013, it's not possible because everything that goes through the same user for improving the performance against the database. But let's look at this one in uh, 2013 uh, in here. The first thing to do is to set up the SQL uh, profile line here. And it's actually part of the SQL Management Studio. So if I open up the SQL Management Studio in here, this one is the full version and not the light product, by the way, uh, or the express version, because the light or express version of SQL Express don't include the profile up here. But if you run on the SQL database, you also have a license for the management studio. So as I open up the SQL profiler, I'll need to import a template because you need to have only the right transaction captured in here. And I already downloaded Easy Security Lite in here. And I'm going to import my SQL template for 2012 in here. Each version refers to the database and you can only use a profiler that is newer or the same version as the database you're recording against. So it imported that one. I can go in here and say I want to go in, um, edit my template because I actually want to make this one my default in here also. It is also possible in my template to actually add filters. So if I only wanted to work against one database, and my database is actually called something with training. So I'm actually going to go in here and say I only want databases that have training in the name here, for example. And then I can go save this one as uh, my default. That means I don't have to pick it all the time and go save it in here. I now set up the profiler. And if I actually start um, a new trace, I have to select the database. At this point, I can also go in and uh, select my column filters again for my database, for example, but I can see I already have the training in here. If you try to do the login name, it's actually not going to be the login name that you use in NAV that is going to be used against the database. So you need to um, either set up a service tier with a different login name or be the only one using this database. In here. So in my case, I'm the only one using training and I can see in here, it starts capturing some permissions in here. If I go back to NAV, I'll go in and edit a customer. And I just restarted this service here, or I haven't been using this part of the application before. And I can see as I start working in here, it gets real busy back here, recording permissions, or recording transactions here. I'm just going to change one single field, and then I'm going to click OK in here. It's important to close the screen because when the screen closes, that's typically when the record is saved in the database. So this one has been running, and I can go in here and say I want to save this one as a trace XML file in here. And I'll just um, put it on my local disk in my temp folder. Because the service tier is actually going to read that file, it's if the service tier and the client is installed on the same computer, you can do this. But in this case, I'm actually going to serve it on a shared folder in here on my network drive, because that means I can also access that one when I actually using the road to client. And the service tier will see that one as the same pass in here. So let's go back into Easy Security Lite in here. We recorded some permissions. I'll create a new permission set. Edit customer. 
and then I will import my SQL profile that's raising here. And in this case, I can actually select my local disk in here. But if I run a service tier that is on a different computer, I would need to select a file that is actually on a share in here. So I'll go into this network share temp in here. And select my edit customer. So if I look at my file name, I'll see it starts with two backslashes, and that means any computer in my network, if they have permission, would be able to do that. Let me just not check this add related permissions in here. And as I import this one, it comes up with a warning that I'm only recording certain tables, and that's because I have the unregistered version in here. There's another video that will tell you how to register the version and get rid of that filter. It's not the completely free version because the registration actually costs a small amount. But now it's reading the trace and it's actually sorting all the events in here to see which tables were being used, what level of permissions are required for it in here. It now imported it. There was 834 events against the database. There was 15 records zero modified and I didn't add the related one in here so I only got the permission required for this one and I could see I had read and modify for my customer and a few other tables down here so this one allowed me to just get the permission that was actually recorded if I create another new role in here edit uh, customer two, and in this time I want to import my SQL profiler trace but I want to check my ads related permissions down here. Again, I only have the unregistered version of it in here, but it will actually now add the related permission. And you see, I don't have to do a lot of drill downs because it's actually what is going to be captured by the recording in here by adding related permissions. So it imported now, but now it added 23 related permissions also in there. So a lot of things I had to do uh, or I didn't have before has been added based on the relations in here. So uh, if I go find my two different rows in here, I would be able to see uh, the difference in the number of permissions in here. So if we look at my edit customer, I can see out here I had 15 permissions. If I had the customer two, I have 38, and that's because I decided to actually include the related permissions in here. One thing again, it's very important to restart the service here. If I actually went and read it this recording now, I would see that I actually had fewer permissions in here that I would before because the service here would basically have cached a lot of the data in here. 